They help. And to show you how far this corruption has gone within our system, they were treating this lady as a criminal. Now, there is absolutely no way um, you could label this lady as a criminal. Um, she is doing what she is doing to benefit our neighbours. And the system, uh, in particular the registrar for what's called the Chinese Medical Board, Chinese Medical Registration Board um, has been going through websites of naturopaths and health practitioners looking for this word. Uh, the word acupuncture, the word herbalism uh, and herbalist uh, are words that are so-called protected under the Chinese Medical Registration Board. And they've had a number of successful prosecutions in the past. Uh, and one of the big problems we have with this particular group is they are trolling through looking for these words. When they find these words, they will, as in Kathy's case, um, send a investigator out. And that investigator will come in uh, to that clinic under false pretense. They are actually instructed to use a false name and to lie. And that was endorsed, unfortunately, by the court the other day. Um, their excuse was, well, if it's uh, an undercover police officer doesn't go to the people that he is investigating and say, I'm oh, an undercover police officer. So under that premise, they were able to lie. Uh, and then they established that, um, uh, that she was um, operating a form of acupuncture in her business. And uh, the next thing Kathy knew about any of this uh, was a summons. So there was no correspondence with her asking her to please align her business and her advertising with the act. And did you know that there was any such thing as a Chinese medical registration board? Of course. They don't tell anybody. They just summons them. And it turns out that the three percent, I think three or six percent of the income assured by this board is through prosecutions. So this is part of this problem that's, that's sneaking up on us and it's just getting worse and worse. So we'll just hand over the microphone to you know, Kathy and um, she can have a, a chat on her experience in the county court the other day and where it's going. very, very nervous on Monday the 26th of March and I purposely wore a bright red dress so I could stand out. Um, anyway, um, uh, I've never been to court before and it's the most, most nerve-breaking experience I've ever come across. They spoke about me and I wasn't allowed to speak about myself. I wasn't allowed to say anything about myself. Um, the prosecutor was the most rudest person I've ever come across and um, he said one thing that I, I didn't agree with, he said, if you put, I, I do laser acupuncture, if you put a word in front of another word it doesn't change it. So the fact that laser is in front of acupuncture doesn't change the fact that it's acupuncture. And I got an email from Pat that said um, something to the effect of, if a doctor, if a doctor, um, if he, and also he said, all doctors are the same and all surgery, if you if a surgeon performs surgery, you know it's a surgeon. And Pat wrote in the email the other day that I got, well, if you put witch in front of doctor, it changes it. Or if you put psychic in front of surgery, it changes that, psychic surgery. 
And, um, and this is what the prosecutor was saying, that acupuncture, laser acupuncture, is the same as acupuncture. It's not. And it is not a regulated business. Acupuncture is inserting needles into someone's skin and piercing it. I do not do anything like that. And so I've got to wait until the 18th of um, April, when it's judgment day, to find what sort of judgment they have on me. The one thing that I um, was um, a little bit upset about was um, I have a very, very good solicitor recommended by Daryl. Uh, she's an amazing solicitor. Unfortunately, I only met my barrister that morning. At, I was, uh, it was 10.30 that we were going in front of uh, Judge Wendy Wilkmont and I met my barrister at quarter to 10 that morning. And I realised she had a very, very strong Chinese accent. And she wasn't, the judge couldn't understand her and lots of people didn't understand her. And I thought, oh, well, this is going to be good. But anyway, um, uh, when my husband came out of that courtroom, he just said, I don't, I don't think we've done well. But there's one good thing about the county court, they read submissions. And like my solicitor said, because Jessica's son had a very heavy accent, she's forced to read that submission. So that's a positive thing for me. Anyway, thanks for listening. And um, hopefully I, I'm not going to be going to the Supreme Court or making myself a frequent visitor of these courts because, like I said, it is the most... I've never experienced anxiety like that in my entire life. So I started hitting all the natural medicines that I know, like um, St John's Warm <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, I just want to thank everybody from CLRG that was there. I was just telling Daryl out there, at school I was never a popular person. I turned around and I saw 20 people behind me and I thought, Kathy, for the first time in your life, you're Miss Popular. <laughs> Darrell, what's the piece facing for that? Uh, in the Magistrates Court, <clears throat> this is a bizarre solicitor that's representing um, Kathy Schopf. And this is a solicitor that works in the Magistrates Court and has had for years. The Magistrates Court approved the costs, just the solicitor's costs, for the Chinese Media Registration Board to be $14,000. What? And she was under five charges. <clears throat> and for each charge, she was fined $1,000. It's bizarre. If she goes to the Supreme Court, wins and sets precedent, yeah. like A, is that likely to happen? And B, if it does happen, it does <clears throat> um, there's always hope. It's always. Uh, I believe that we have got a good chance of getting this up, and we've also got the solicitor and barrister who are determined to see that this gets up. Because in July this year, the Chinese Medicine Registration Board spreads its tentacles over the whole of the Commonwealth of Australia. And the lady that is prosecuting Kathy is the, um, the head of that organisation, and she is not a very nice piece of work. Okay, so we really need to get this case up and running, and we've got some very good law behind us. And it would one of the beauties of our court system is when a judge errs in law, and that's all they can do is err in law. That's a fancy name. We made a stuffer. Yeah, we stuffed it up. That's we can review them. Okay, it's called judicial review. A magistrate uh, or a county court judge or a Supreme Court judge, it doesn't matter what level they are, they are reviewable. And they're reviewable on summons to the, here in Victoria, it's um, the Court of Appeal. And it's usually put in front of two or three judges of the Court of Appeal. And, uh, it has worked in the past. They don't like us using that. Uh, even a lot of lawyers don't know that that ability is there. But judicial review has existed for hundreds of years. Frank, Frank, I need to come up. Okay.
And we'll get you in the red jumper as soon as Frank's finished. Can I go here? Yeah, we we'll go there. I didn't use that. My wife is down there. A lot of my head. Um, through the night, I felt in my heart that um, we fail generally because most of us can't afford a lawyer. Is that correct? Yeah. Secondly, these meetings are great, but they're hopeless and useless if we don't have support, particularly in the area of going to court. Now, I'm sitting there and I thought, when we learn to drive, we get a book first, and this is similar to this, and then we go with an instructor, don't we? And I think this is the same here. We need some people who have time, who are retired, who will commit themselves and have the gift. Without the gift, forget it. It's not going to work. I started um, standing against uh, banks and their fraud and their lies and their deception and foreclosures. I was kicked out of my home last Tuesday week. It's not a good feeling, but I had to go through it to really have the empathy for those that have lost their homes in the past and will in the future. <coughs> But I won't, I won't talk long because I have respect for all of you and I hate snoring. Um, so my advocate who started me off on this is going to go all around Australia. And I used to run meetings at home called the Central Highlands Economic Law Reform Group of people dissipated, moved away simply because they were sick and tired of inaction and no power and authority, seemingly. But we should have kept going. It's the same here. Supported, but we need someone to go to court and give us that arm. And what else I remembered was that I'm a Christian minister, and in the Bible it says uh, a case is established with two or three witnesses. It's very strong. Once we do something that isn't godly or biblical, we lose power and authority. Anyhow, I had nine hearings. The last two were a total abomination. And there is no justice in this country unless we go prepared. But I'm not gifted with law stuff and going to courts. I'm an ex-prison officer and a sports teacher and whatever else. But now I haven't been working for quite a while. And it's embarrassing. But because of this seven-year battle with two cases, I have been in this position now. Today, just to cut it short, I had a phone call from a lawyer who was doing a class action for a lot of people around Australia. That failed. But he rang me and said, Frank, I haven't forgotten you. <coughs> and I know that the good Lord's on the case because further to that, I also had a call from someone who was going to give me a bit of a hand with accommodation because tomorrow night, or rather Friday morning, I'll be homeless. I had to go through that. However, I'm on my way home to the place where I've been staying on and off for a few days and I got a call from Senator John Madigan, I helped get him into Parliament. And I've been hitting him hard with the fact that we, the people, need their support, our servants, who we've elected to represent us at the so-called highest level. We're the highest level, really, the people under the Queen, whatever. Anyway, then he said, well, I'm with Nick Centipon, and his phone cut out. But it's not finished, because now he's on notice, and he knows that he's got to do something about it. So, all in all, I'm confident that I'm going to get my house back sometime, but to get kicked out of your home, have a sheriff turn up all of a sudden on the 13th of January, 20, the 20th of uh, March, the guy turns up with another, or two, two new sheriffs, and they say, this is it, you're out today. But they left me with a final notice, and they went away. But the cowards came quarter to nine, and Alan Webster was there uh, about five to nine, and as soon as he came, they virtually ran out the door and took off. Yeah. Now, on the well, first of March... I'm sorry, I wish I had my proper uniform on. Yeah. I thought I was sure it was now. We had eight, <laughs> eight sheriff's cars, three at the gate, and five came to me, and I've been going to bed at three, four, five, six, seven, and eight a.m. with all the work I've been trying to do. But another warning to us all, when you help someone, don't give them books to read. Try to give them quick solutions because it's very, very hard when you're stressed out and you really know this is a heavy thing. And I'm doing it on behalf of people of Australia. Otherwise, I'd say, stop the house, take it, 14,000 bottles of wine and so many goods, 
that I can't store them because I haven't got the money to pay for it. 